Hi, this is the base supplemental video to go along with the lesson for Habanera number 184 from the Essential Technique for Strings book. That's book three in the Essential Elements series. If you haven't watched it already, please check the description for the link to the main lesson about this song, because in this video I'm only going over the few things in it that are specific to the bass. There are a lot of things that are the same no matter what instrument you're playing, and I only go over those in the other video, so please check the link for that. Okay, so getting on into the bass stuff, we're going to go ahead and start with the warm-ups as they relate to bass. We have two warm-ups to do on this song, a D minor scale because it's mainly in the key of D minor, and a chromatic scale because it has a significant chromatic section in the first half of the melody. So just to remind you, the D minor scale has B flat and everything else is natural. So we're going to put on the metronome at the speed of habanera. And you know, play this along with me if you've listened to it a time or two. One, two, three. Remember to always play the arpeggio together with your scale, and I just want to point out that you know, the, the D minor scale fingering is pretty straightforward on the bass, 0 one 2 0 one 2 um, For the arpeggio, I like to shift here and play my A, and then go across for the D and back for the A. No matter which fingering you use, you could also do it this way, but if you use the G string to go A, D, A, then you have two big shifts in a row. If you use the fingering F natural here, shift to the A, then you get to stay in one position for a little while before you shift and you don't have to do your shifts back to back. So I think that ends up being a little bit better fingering for the arpeggio. We're gonna move on to the D chromatic scale. And on the D chromatic scale, if you take a look at number 185, shifting chromatic fingering, I think that's a pretty good chromatic scale fingering to put your shifts in between the first fingers going from half position to first position and then the same thing on the G string and other than that you're just you know using your fingers in order. So again take note of what time this scale starts at and play it along with me after you've listened to it a time or two. One, two, three. One thing that you do need to be careful about as you're going through that chromatic scale, make sure that as you are shifting between first and half position, if you notice my hand position, even after I've made that shift, my fingers are perpendicular to the string, my fingers I'm not using are relaxed and over the string, my thumb has not wrapped around the base, nor has it become thumbs up here on the back of the neck. Any of those things are gonna make it really hard for you to get to the notes you need to as you go through the other different parts of the scale. All right, so I am going to go ahead and play through the entire habanera on the bass just so you can see how that chromatic fingering lays out as you go through the, the song. And then I've got just a couple of things to point out that are unique to the bass about the approach to habanera. So again, I'm gonna put on the metronome and it's set at 65. I don't think I mentioned that earlier. One, two,
All right, so I hope you could see as I was playing it through that I kept really good hand shape the whole time as I was making my third position to first position to half position shift. The one thing that's a little bit different than what's marked in the book that I really like to do on this song is when I get to the EFG, I do not like to play open G in that spot. I really prefer to go to second position and use a fourth finger for the G, because here's the rule about fourth finger. And it's pretty much the same rule no matter what instrument you're playing, whether it's violin, viola, cello, or bass, is that if using a fourth finger keeps you on the same string, then you're better off using the fourth finger. So when I get to this, Instead of using the open G, I can make that little shift to second position and back, and it keeps me all on the D string. I end up with much better tone quality, and I don't have to deal with tricky string crossings in the bow. So if you haven't experimented with that fingering, I highly recommend it. I think it ends up being a much better sounding fingering, even if it is slightly more difficult than doing the open G. I think it's worth it for the improved tone quality. All right, so I think that about covers it for things in this song that are specific to the bass that I did not cover in the main lesson. So if you didn't watch it again, check the description below the video for the link over to the main lesson. If you found this helpful, and I hope you did, please remember to like the video, subscribe to my channel, and always remember, keep practicing.